Well, that was absolute sh Yes, hello and welcome back to my channel. We've just seen Algeria's opening game of the defence of their Africa Cup of Nations title and it's actually finished Algeria nil, Sierra Leone nil. No, it's not a nightmare, it's actually happened. We have actually just drawn our opening game with that world and weight of expectation on our shoulders. We, we've drawn to Sierra Leone. Wow. Now I respected Sierra Leone. I even said Sierra Leone would go through to the last 16. They've got some good players. They they battled hard with Nigeria in qualifying. You know, but I, I was expecting us to win by like two or three goals. I wasn't expecting us to not, to not actually win the game. Like, to draw this game is now going to have huge implications on that dressing room and our knockout path going forwards. But how have we just drawn to Sierra Leone? How has this happened? Like, I don't understand. Now, what I, first of all, what I will say is, is that the heat was, what, 35 degrees, very, very hot conditions. The pitch, the playing surface was absolutely shocking, diabolical pitch. It was like playing in the mud. It was disgraceful. But we couldn't break Sierra Leone down, and that was partially down to some brilliant goalkeeping by the Sierra Leone goalkeeper, Mohamed Kamara. Probably man of the match. And you've got Stephen Corker in defence, who's literally played, the guy's literally played for England. He's even scored for England, right? So you know there's quality there. Kamara in goal, well there was about five Kamaras, but the Kamara in goal and Corker at the back were just brilliant for Sierra Leone. They defended very, very well. But but let's look at the team we played. So Rice and Bolhi started in goal. It was actually a very strong team. There were some rumours that, and some people wanted a weakened team. Imagine if we played a weakened team, guys. We'd have bloody lost the game. So Mbolhi in goal, Yusuf Artan right back, Ben Sabaini was available left back, and then Mandy Adbadalain at the back, the defence that I predicted. Um, and then in midfield was the interesting one, a very, very attacking team. Faguli fit to play, Harris Bulkubla gets the nod, Manasseh suspended, Zaruki's got an illness, and then Yassin Brahimi as well. Now we'll come on to Brahimi in a second, but that's a very attacking midfield. You've only got one real out and out centre mid in there. And then, of course, Mares, Bellelli and Slomani had to be the front three if all were available. That was always going to happen. And, you know, Sierra Leone actually had two brilliant chances in that first half. Poor defending from Mandy um, against the number 12, Kamara. And then they had a header from Bangora as well. So at half time, the warning signs were there. And then we came out the second half and Brahimi, two brilliant chances for Yassine Brahimi. I've said this so many times, when Brahimi plays... You need two footballs, one for him and one for the game itself. He don't pass. He doesn't pass, right? If he had a controller, there'd be no X button on it. Okay, the guy doesn't pass. I don't know why. Two great chances. One, he's through on goal and he's hit it into the ground. The keeper's managed to get it. And another one, he's hit it straight at the goalkeeper. But overall, who can you say played well? Who can you say for us played well? You can't blame the manager. The manager's put the strongest team out there. So... There's some question marks, and then the substitutions came. Of course, uh, Ben Lamry came on at half time. I think that was because Badalane had a yellow card. And then we had Bunajah, we had Bendubka, we had Belaya. And as soon as Bendubka's come on, he had a brilliant chance. It looked like he had an absolute tap in at the, uh, the far post. He just had to tap it in. Amazing block by Stephen Corker. How Bendubka didn't, Bendubka didn't score that, I, I don't know. And then even when Ben Rahma came on, he had a brilliant opportunity to just tap the ball in and he's hit it wide. And I do think the playing service and the pitch had something to do with that. But it's a poor pitch for all the teams. All the teams are experiencing the same poor pitches. And we've seen Senegal struggle to get over the line. Morocco scored quite late against Ghana. Cameroon needed two penalties. We haven't found the breakthrough and we've actually drawn to Sierra Leone. We have actually drawn the game. We have drawn... See, the reigning champions, we are now 35... I know we're 35 games unbeaten. I know we're 35 unbeaten. Who cares? We've just drawn to Sierra Leone. And all, all, all I can say is Mohamed Kamara, Stephen Corker, two outstanding defensive performances. And if they can keep that up... And I said Sierra Leone would go through, like I said, if they can keep that up, they've got a chance. They've got a real chance at going somewhere in this tournament. So we've drawn the game nil-nil. It's not ideal. And what it means is it's going to be very hard to come first in this group because coming first you get I think Nigeria or Egypt if one of those comes second and 
Looking at it now, we're probably going to come second. I can't see Ivory Coast slipping up here. Well, they might, but I'd be shocked if Ivory Coast slip up as well. We're going to have to now beat Equatorial Guinea and probably get something against Ivory Coast. We can't afford to come third. If we come third, we're going to get a big boy in, in the last 16, a huge team. So we need to get points. We have to beat Guinea. And in the Ivory Coast game, I was saying rest players, it's a dead rubber. No, that Ivory Coast game has massive implications and meaning now. So we can't afford to rest players anymore. Could you imagine if Mardi rested players today? We probably would have lost, in all, in all fairness. But um, a few decisions I didn't get. To start Brahimi over Belaya was a shock. If you're going to play that attacking system, play Belaya in that role after the friendly he had and the impact he had against Ghana. You know, you've started Slomani because of the goal against Ghana. Start Belaya for his impact as well. A lot of people were surprised to see Brahimi in the lineup. And in that heat, you've got Brahimi, Faguli, and Slomani on the wrong side of 30, I think. It's very hard for them to run 90 minutes. That's why they came off. And also, if you're not going to try Amora now, you're not going to, you've got nothing to lose in that last 10 minutes and you're not going to gamble with Amora. When is Amora going to play? Is there no trust in Amora? Like, why is he here then? So, I would like to have seen Amora just let him do what he can do. Like, he's a young kid breaking through, nothing to lose. When's Amora going to play now? So why take it? But anyway, unfortunately, we couldn't find the breakthrough while Andy Delore sitting at home. But anyway... Algeria nil, Sierra Leone nil. I, I can't believe this. And, you know, a lot of people were saying, I said in the preview 3 0. I said 3 0. I wasn't expecting a 5 6 0. Good side, qualified. Drew 4 4 to Nigeria. But their defensive display, and going forward, if they had better decision making going forward, they would have been 2 0 up at half time. We would have lost our unbeaten record to Sierra Leone. My God, oh, this is shocking. I can't believe it. I, I don't know what to say. Like, we had our best team. We didn't even have COVID cases. We had our best team out there. The best possible team was out there. Banasa Zaruki, fine. Banasa Zaruki is not why we didn't win, okay? We didn't have our finishing boots off. All the shots were going straight at the keeper. No one wanted to pass. Ben Sabini, last minute, why are you shooting? Brahimi twice, why are you shooting? Pass. And their goalkeeper, it was like Manuel Neuer at the World Cup all those years ago. Every time Slomani was thrown goal, that Kamara fella in goal was bombing forward. He was at his box more than he was in his box. It was ridiculous. It was literally like Neuer against Slomani as well at that World Cup game. But now, what result do we hope for between Ivory Coast and Equatorial Guinea? Now, it's very likely Ivory Coast will win, which means they'll have three points. We'll have one point along with Sierra Leone and uh, the Equatorial Guinea will have no point. We, we probably, I don't know, like it's going to get a bit messy now and we're going to have to put in a very strong performance against Ivory Coast in that last game. But we're 35 unbeaten. We've kept the clean sheet. I'm trying to stay positive. 35 unbeaten. Clean sheet. Players have now experienced the terrain and the atmosphere and the conditions. They know what to expect now before it would come as a shock. Hopefully, going forward, we're not going to kick off at 1 bloody p.m. Because 1 p.m. kickoff is a nightmare. It's boiling. We need to play in the dark. We need to play in the dark big time because we can't play in the heat again. We can't run. Thank goodness we've got five subs or they'll be on their, on their knees, right? Not breathing properly. Anyway, we've drawn the game. I'm shocked, I'm shocked, and you can mock Algeria if you're not Algerian, if you want to, it's fine. I've seen, Alge I've seen Algeria lose an opening game 3-0 to Malawi, okay? This isn't a big deal to me, all right? What's a big deal is the games that follow. Because when we did lose 3-0 to Malawi, we bounced back. And we need to bounce back from this. We haven't lost. Hope the dressing room morale stays calm, it's okay. But there were some questionable decisions to play Brahimi, and Brahimi not passing, and... We should have found a way to deal with their goalkeeper coming off. I mean, the amount of times Mares could have actually chipped the keeper and didn't was annoying. And also, Belayli had an interesting penalty shout. We actually had a penalty shout in the first half for handball. It was checked. It wasn't given. Senegal got a penalty for something very similar in their 90th minute winner against Zimbabwe. That was a handball pen as well. And then the second half, there was contact on Belayli in the box. And it did go to a VAR check. And again, they have been given at this tournament. So is there a bit of a bias against us? I don't know. I want to know what you guys thought of that game because I am speechless now and annoyed. And that's ruined my week. So uh, we've drawn to Sierra Leone. And of course, we're going to get mocked by the rest of the continent. Oh, this big powerhouse Algeria have scored no goals against Sierra Leone. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's what's happened. Yeah. Well, good news. We'll be back against Equatorial Guinea where we hopefully, I think Equatorial Guinea, like I said, are weaker than Sierra Leone. Don't be Equatorial Guinea who, like, if we don't beat Equatorial Guinea, then um, then the, these videos might be a bit bit <laughs> a bit shorter than than usual because we'll be going out. But 
let's hope in Jala we do get that win and um, that it can only get better from it. It can't get worse from this. It's got to get better. We will improve. We just beat Ghana 3-0. We've still got it in our locker. Still got the unbeaten run. But no one was expecting that result. Not just us. Other fans were not expecting that result. And it's probably the biggest shock. It is the biggest shock of the tournament so far. And now we've literally got to sit back. We've got to watch all Ivory Coast do. We've got to see what they're like. See what Equatorial Guinea are like. And hopefully, inshallah, we're going to bounce back. But anyway, that has been my thoughts on this very disappointing day for Algerian football. Algerian nil, Sierra Leone nil. What a way to start your year, guys. Anyway, what did you think in the comments down below? I've got to stay upbeat. We're still going to win the cup, right? We're going to, we didn't beat Sierra Leone, but we're going to win the cup. We're still going to win the cup, right? We're, we're, we're going to win the cup. Are we? Bye.